Hi, um, good afternoon everyone. We will start in two minutes. So maybe we request everyone to settle down. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Thursday once again, and we, we welcome all of you to the PIDS uh, webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. I'm Sheila CR, and I will be moderating this event. For this week, uh, we are featuring another interesting topic, which is about our senior citizens. Based on the 2015 Census of Population and Housing, there are about uh, 7.5 million senior citizens or persons aged 60 and above. The Philippine Statistics Authority projected that this number will increase by 11.4% in 2030 and 15.9% in 2045. Meanwhile, a 2017 report by, by the United Nations projected that the Philippines' elderly population will grow to almost 15 million by 2050. Considering their important role in society, we need to ensure that our senior citizens are well taken care of. Apart from being less economically active than our uh, younger age groups, senior citizens are more susceptible to various medical conditions and comorbidities. It is also important to know that, um, that, that they need um, support in terms of uh, health care and income security, and it is important that these are well provided to them. This afternoon, our president, Dr. Celia Reyes, will present as a case study which she co-authored with her um, research assistants, Arkin Arboneda and Nina Assis. And this study assessed the current uh, policies and programs for senior citizens in our country. Specifically, our uh, researchers determined the accessibility of these programs and identified the gaps by comparing the needs of senior citizens vis-a-vis -vis available services. They also provided recommendations to improve senior citizens' access to social protection. We will also hear from uh, the Department of Social Welfare and Development Assistant Secretary for uh, Policy and Plans, Choseline Niwane, about her insights on the study's findings as well as her as well as her recommendations on how to improve the government's social protection programs for senior citizens. But before we start, uh, let me acknowledge, let me recognize the presence of National Anti-Poverty Commission Under Secretary Paterno Ruiz. Social Security System Vice President Ms. Choi Villacorta, uh, Senate Economic and Planning Office Executive Director Merwin Salazar, House of Representatives CPR, CPBRD Director Dominador Gamboa, DSWD Assistant Bureau Director Maricel Deloria, Philippine Social Science Council Executive Director Dr. Lourdes Portus, Cavite State University College of Nursing Dean Dr. Evelyn Del Mundo, DLSU School of Economics Dean Dr. Marites Tionco, UPLB uh, Institute for Governance and Rural Development Director Dr. Jane Reyes, and Ascend President Attorney Salucius Rodrigo. And of course, to our colleagues uh, from government, private sector, uh, civil society, um, who are joining us via WebEx or watching us uh, watching this webinar, 
via our Facebook account. Thank you very much for join, joining us in this webinar. We at PIDS look forward to a fruitful discussion with all of you this afternoon. And speaking of fruitful discussion, allow me at this point to discuss our guidelines for the open forum. So while the presentation or the open forum is uh, ongoing, if you have any question, just use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of the screen. Just uh, type your name, your affiliation, and your question and send it to everyone. I repeat to everyone and not to a particular person. Please make your questions concise. I will read your question during the open forum. And for our viewers on Facebook, you're also very much welcome to uh, participate. So just type your question in the comment section and we will read some of the questions during the open forum. Okay, so let, let us now proceed to the presentation. Our speaker for today is none other than the president of a PIDS. She is the female president of the Institute. She specializes in the field of econometrics and has conducted and published numerous research and policy papers on poverty assessments and evaluations of social protection programs. She is also the network leader of the Community-Based Monitoring System, or CBMS. She has also served as president of the Philippine Economic Society in 2011 and has been an advisor to various national government technical working groups on poverty monitoring and indicator systems in the country since the early 1990s. She has been the chairperson of the Technical Committee on Poverty Statistics convened by the National Statistical Coordination Board since 20, uh, 2003. Our speaker is a cum laude graduate, a Bachelor of Science in Statistics, has an, has, a, has an MA in Economics from the University of the Philippines, and a PhD in Economics from the University of Pennsylvania. Friends, Dr. Celia Reyes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Um, so for this afternoon, I'll be sharing with you um, the paper that I, I did together with Arkin Arboneda and Ronina Assis. Um, this was actually prepared for um, initially for the Philippine Commission on Women, but we've extended the study to include more recent information. Um, they say that we, we decided to um, work on this paper because they say that um, 60 is now the new 40. So, hindi na yung. Um, um, don't, in fact, I have some comments on the, the um, picture for the for the, the poster for this seminar. Uh, hindi na yata yun yung typical na, na senior citizen look. Anyway, for this afternoon, um, allow me to share the outline of the presentation. Um, we'll, I'll be um, discussing briefly the situation of senior citizens in the Philippines and then some policies and programs for senior citizens and identify some gaps in these policies and programs and offer some recommendations. Next, please. Um, the motivation for this is that um, we all know that senior citizens are less economically active and they also need greater health services. So what are the policies and programs to provide income support and health services to senior citizens? Are these policies and programs adequate to address the needs of senior citizens? Um, next slide, please. So, if we look at the um, projection, about 1.05 billion or 13.5% of the world population in 2020 are aged 60 years or over. And this is projected to increase to 1.41 billion or 16.5% of the total population by 2030. And then to increase further to 3.07 billion or 28.2% by 2100. So we can see that um, the number of um, the elderly or the senior citizens, I will be using those terms um, uh, synonymously, and um, they are expected to grow um, quite fast if you look at the, the chart. Next, please. In Asia, the share of senior citizens to total population is expected to shift from 13.1% in 2020 to 33.7% in 2100. If you're looking for them, the, the color um, in the circles would indicate the, the region that it is or the continent that it is representing. So if you're looking for Asia, that's the red 
um, shaded area in the map as well as in the red shaded circle um, or the circle with the red band. And so that shows that the share of senior citizens is going to increase from 13.1% in 2020 to 33.7% in um, 2100. And you can see that the share um, for most of the continents will actually be in over or close to 30%, at least 30%, except for um, Africa, um, where still relatively young population, so that by 2100, the share of senior citizens would still be below 20%. Next, please. Among all countries, the Philippines ranks 117th in terms of percentage share of elderly population at 8.6% in 2020. Um, by 2050, it's expected to go up. The share is expected to go up to 16.5% of the total population. Next, please. But in terms of magnitude, the Philippines ranks 22nd at 9.43 million in 2020 um, and is expected to go up to 23.86 million um, by 2050. Next, please. So if we look at some of the, the vital statistics, you will notice that um, we've made some progress if you look at the total fertility or the number of live births per woman. Um, it has gone down from 4.92 during the period 1980 to 85, down to 2.58 births per woman um, in 2015 to 2020. Um, and then if you look at the under 60 mortality or the deaths under age 60 per 1,000 live births, we can see that um, it has actually gone down from um, the period 1980 to 1985, it was 204.69 deaths under age 60 per thousand live births, down to 157.13 in uh, during the period 2015 to 2020. And you will also notice that the um, under 60 mortality rate is much lower for um, for females, okay, did I quote the right numbers earlier? The brown bars represent the numbers for both sexes. The blue bars represent um, the data for males and the pink bars represent the data for um, females. So um, the under 60 mortality rate for both sexes has gone down from 267 to 212 over that period. And for men, um, from 325 to 264, and for women, as I mentioned earlier, it's much lower, from 204 to 257. Um, also, the life expectancy at birth, um, given some, given this progress in, in um, health uh, and reduction in mortality, has actually gone up over time. Over the same period, it has gone up for both sexes from average of 64 years to 71 years um, during the period 2015 to 2020. And women have higher life expectancy at 75 compared to 67 for men. So these have contributed towards having an aging population. Next, please. So let me talk briefly about the situation of senior citizens in, in the Philippines. Next, please. Um, in the Philippines, senior citizens are defined in Republic Act 9994 as any person aged 60 years or over. Um, in uh, Based on the 2015 Census of Population and Housing by the Philippine Statistics Authority, there were about 7.5 million senior citizens, or representing about 7.5% of the total population in 2015. And there were about 3.3 uh, million males and 4.2 million females. Next, please. And in terms of location, the national capital region, Central Luzon and Calabar Zone have the largest shares of senior citizen population. So almost four in every 10 senior citizens reside in NCR, Central Luzon and Calabar Zone. Next, please. So this is, we're just showing the distribution of uh, the population by age groups. And what we can see, you can see from the figures um, tumatabayin dun sa taas, that means that um, the share 
or the number of senior citizens are actually for the older groups are actually increasing. So the shares are actually um, increasing for the older groups. So that if you look at, the, for instance, if you look at 60 um, age group 60 to 64, um, if you have about 2.4 uh, million um, males and females, 1.3 million males and 1.4 million females. Um, in 2015, uh, by 2045, it's projected that you would have 3.1 million males and 3.3 million females. Next, please. Um, many senior citizens struggle with poverty. So among the estimated senior citizen population in 2015, using the data from um, the Family Income and Expenditure Survey, um, they're actually um, about 890,000 senior citizens who belong to families classified as income poor and about 300,000 uh, senior citizens belonging to families classified as food poor. Um, when we talk of income poor, we're actually comparing the income per capita income of that family with the poverty threshold, meaning if you're income poor, you don't have enough income to meet basic food and non-food needs. Um, if you're classified as food poor, that means that you don't have enough income to meet basic food needs. Um, and so what we're finding is that the poverty incidence in 2015, based on the PSA data, is about 13.2%, meaning that 13.2% of the senior citizens can be classified as income poor, and 4.3% can be classified as food poor. Um, you will notice if you look at the bar chart, um, this shows actually the um, distribution um, of the, um, uh, this is actually the, the um, yeah, the distribution of uh, the seniors. Um, and you will notice distribution of the population of seniors. You will notice that 5.5% of the senior citizens are in the poorest decile, and 15.5% are in the richest decile. Um, that could actually reflect the fact that those in the richer deciles tend to um, live longer due to better access to health care and better nutrition, among others. Um, also, you will notice that 39.5% of the seniors belong to the bottom five deciles, while 60.5% of the seniors belong to the richest five deciles. So, mas maraming, deci uh, maraming seniors who belong to the richer um, income groups. Next, please. Um, now, using data at tw uh, for 2017, the annual poverty, and indi annual poverty indicator survey, uh, we note that about 5.2% of senior citizens are in the bottom income decile. So, hindi masyadong malayo dun sa number that we that we got for 2015 using FIES. Um, and you will notice also that 16.6% were in the richest income decile. And again, you will notice that uh, mas mataas yung um, um, males. Um, Dun sa, in the richest, in the richer income days compared to uh, females. Um, yes. Okay, next, please. So, what are the senior citizens doing? Um, using the data from the 2015 Census of Population, and this is released by, by PSA, um, the data shows that 42.1% of the senior citizens are gainfully employed. Um, so they are um, workers. And if you look at the occupation uh, that they are engaged in, 37.7% are in um, skilled agricultural, forestry, and fishery workers, while 15.8% uh, are workers engaged in elementary occupations. What about the rest of the senior citizens? 22.3% are pensioners, retired, and disabled. 20.8% are housekeepers in own house, and 14.8% are students and dependents. Um, I didn't show you here anymore uh, the full table on educational attainment, but uh, we noted that about 
um, 51% of senior citizens completed at most elementary education and about a fourth of them um, have at least some high, sc high school um, education. Next, please. Um, when comparing across different age groups, we find that senior citizens are less economically active, um, defined as do not have a job or business, than younger age groups. So, for instance, if you look at the uh, bars, um, the first bar, orange, um, refers to all age groups, and then the next bar represents age group 30 to 39. And then the next bar, um, light green in my uh, computer, um, rep represents the age group 40 to 49. And then um, the next one is 50 to 59. And the last bar, which is dark brown, um, represents the age group 60 and above. You will notice that the bars, the first four bars are close together. Um, and then the one for the age group 60 and above falls down drastically. Um, they, they're, um, the proportion of population have work or business for the 60 and above is much lower than those for the younger age group. So for instance, if you look at the rightmost uh, side, that's the data for 2017, um, the proportion of senior citizens who are um, who have a job or or business is only 43.8 percent as compared to for instance the age group 50 to 59 at 76.7 percent for 40 to 49 that's 78.7 for 30 to 39 that's actually 74.9 so you will see that senior citizens are actually um less economically active um you will also note that over time, um, there seems to be an increase from 2008 to 2014 um, in terms of the um, economic participation of seniors from 47.2 in 2008 to 50.1 in 2014. However, in recent years, from 2014 to 2017, we note that there has been a decline in the proportion of senior citizens who have a job or business. So falling from 50.1% in 2014 to 43.8% in 2017. Next, please. Um, we um, broke it down further, um, those who are 60 and over, into um, different age groups. So we looked at the participation, economic participation of 60 to 64, 65 to 69, 70 to 74, 75 and over. And then the last bar would represent all senior citizens. And you will notice that senior citizens tend to be, tend to remain to be economically active until they reach 70. And the higher proportion um, in lower income deciles, a higher proportion among the lower income deciles as being economically active. So. Um, if we were to look at this more closely, what this suggests is that uh, people don't stop working when they reach um, 65, they continue to work, and that proportion is higher among the um, lower income groups. And probably that's a reflection that the poor cannot afford to be unemployed if they don't have um, um, pensions, if um, they don't have other sources of income, then they, they're forced to work even beyond um, 65, or um, we could also take it that um, they're economically active because, um, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, 60 is now the new 40, so um, they can still um, are, can be very productive, and so um, there's no significant, um, um, not as large a drop uh, between the proportion of those of who are economically active between 60 to 64 and 65 to um, 69. And uh, I just want to mention that actually the compulsory retirement is 65 for government and 60 for some private companies. And the law mandating compulsory requirement was actually passed in 1992 when life expectancy was 67.5. Um, 
now the life expectancy is 71. So um, the question is, should we consider revising the uh, retirement age? But I think that's a topic for another webinar. Next, please. Um, across income decides, a significant proportion of economically active senior citizens are self-employed. So um, if you look at that, um, this is the bar. Um, one, two, three, four. Um, what color is this? I don't have a pointer, but um, the first bar, the first uh, this is stock bar would be work without pay in own family operated farmer business. The second would be work with pay on own family operated farmer business. The third is employer in own family operated farmer business. And the fourth category would be self employed without any employee. And you will notice that up to the ninth decile, majority of those who are economically active are self employed. But for the richest decile, they tend to be either self-employed or employer in own family operated farm or business. Next, please. Um, between males and females, we find that females are less economically active than males. So for instance, um, among senior citizens, um, that's one towards the, the right hand side. Um, the uh, proportion of uh, males who are economically active is 53.9% as compared to 35.6% for um, females. And that pattern is the same across um, all age groups, um, 60 to 64, 65 to 69, 70 to 74, 75 and over, and even for the younger age group, um, age 15 to 59, and that could probably be um, due to the responsibility of women to care for the home, as some studies have shown. So, partly due to that. Next, please. Um, we also note that the growing population of senior citizens entails an increasing need for health care and related services. So, senior citizens often suffer from several health conditions, take various maintenance medications and or require more interactions with healthcare providers. Although half of older Filipinos consider themselves to be of average health, they have reported functional disabilities and illnesses such as arthritis, rheumatism, high blood pressure, and chronic back pain. That's according to 2000, 2007 Philippine study on aging. So because of this, I think um, it's just uh, like a typical machine, uh, you know, after so many years, uh, it needs to be um, maintain, it requires more maintenance than um, a younger machine. Next, please. So uh, that's a brief overview of the situation of uh, senior citizens. Let me now turn to some of the policies and programs that have been implemented by the Philippine government to cater to the needs and um, um, to the needs and um, um, concerns of senior citizens. Next, please. So what I've highlighted is, is basically needs in terms of health, although I did not show that anymore. I just quoted the finding from uh, other studies and then also showed that there's less um, economic participation among um, senior citizens. So basically looking at that. So how do you address um, that uh, those uh, concerns, meaning uh, greater health needs as well as need for income support? So the government social protection programs for senior citizens um, provide income support, such as through retirement packages, pensions, discount privileges, tax incentives, and healthcare support. Um, social protection programs for senior citizens include senior citizen discount and tax incentives, contributory pensions, such as from SSS and GSIS, non-contributory pension, um, what we call the social pension program being implemented, and then field health and also other incentives that could be provided by um, even local government units. So if you turn to contributory pension that's being managed by SSS and GSIS, we have for the public sector um, the GSIS program wherein retirees are provided with retirement packages depending on their years of service in the public sector. 
Now for private sector employees, OFW self-employed, non-working spouses, members separated from employment, you have um, the social security system um, who provides um, pension or retirement pensions for retirees who are 60 years and above. Now we also have, in addition to that, the National Health Insurance Program, wherein senior citizens who are not covered by any of the existing membership categories of field health are automatically enrolled in the government's health insurance program. Next, please. So um, just before I leave that, so in principle, if you have that, all senior citizens are actually covered by field health. Now let's go to um, the non-contributory uh, pension, um, because what I mentioned earlier, are actually the contributory uh, pension we're in. Contributory means that you have to pay something to be able to um, receive a pension. So while working, you have to pay, if you're a government worker, you have to contribute um, to that pension by paying part of your salary. And then the same thing is uh, true for those working in the private sector. Now, when you say non-contributory pension, that means you don't have to contribute to pay um, something to be able to receive this pension. So Republic Act number 9994 or the Expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010 was enacted in 20 was enacted in 2010 to provide for a monthly stipend for indigent senior um, citizens. And this is for uh, the qualifications to be um, eligible for this or you should be frail or sickly or disabled without regular income or support from family and relatives and without pension from private or government institutions. So this is being implemented by the Department of Social Welfare and Development and the SOCPEN aims to provide additional government assistance through a monthly stipend of 500 pesos to identified indigent senior citizens. Um, an additional stipend of 200 pesos per month um, was provided for by the train law under the unconditional cash transfer program of the government. And the monthly additional cash grant has been increased to 300 pesos in 2019 and 2020, but it stops in um, 2020. So by 2021, um, this provision of, for, of the train law um, will no longer provide additional um, cash transfer to the senior citizen. And if you look at the number of beneficiaries across time of this SOC pen program, you will notice that it has gone up from um, 475,478 in 2014 to 3,796,791 in 2019. And consequently, the budget has also increased from 3.1 billion in 2014 to 23 billion in 2019. Next, please. Um, so I um, won't go through this um, in detail, but um, I think uh, those working in the in the government sector would be very familiar with this. But basically, these are just the uh, this spells out the qualifications to be able to get certain retirement benefits. So basically, if you worked in government, for instance, for at least 15 years in service or at least 60, 60 years upon, re upon retirement, then you get a certain amount of uh, pension. Next, please. Similarly, uh, for those working in the, in the private uh, sector, uh, SSS provides uh, pensions, and this the coverage would be um, for employers, private sector employees, and self-employed persons, and that's for compulsory coverage. And then you also uh, could opt for voluntary coverage for OFWs, non-working spouses, and members separated from uh, employment. And again, retirement benefits depends on the credited years of service of the member. And um, this just spells out the, the details. I won't go into that. The details of all of these are actually in the paper I mentioned at the start of the presentation. Next, please. Um, if you look at the number of um, pensioners, um, you will notice it's increasing over time. The blue bars refer to um, pensioners um, from SSS, and then the green bars 
would be pensioners um, from GSIS. Um, we all know the numbers are much smaller for government because, as you all know, I mean, the number of workers in the government is much smaller than those in the private sector. Um, but I think what is just uh, what we just need to take note of here is that uh, the number of pensioners increasing or have been increasing since 2005, and you don't expect that same rate of increase for um, GSIS pensioners because of the number of uh, workers. Next, please. Um, I think this one is very interesting. So you see the big gap um, in terms of the number of pensioners, much higher for SSS. But if you look at the average monthly retirement pension, it's substantially higher for GSIS pensioners. So for instance, if you look at, there's no data for 2018 for um, GSIS pension, but um, if you look at the 2017 data, for instance, um, the average monthly retirement pension for SSS is about 5,123. And then for government, it's three times at 18, more than three times, 18,525. That's primarily because of the higher contributions made by GSIS um, members. Um, next, please. Um, the other program is the PhilHealth um, a program, which uh, addresses the healthcare needs. Um, the Republic Act number 10645, enacted in 2014, provide for mandatory PhilHealth coverage for all senior citizens. So I, as I mentioned earlier, technically, all senior citizens are uh, members of PhilHealth in under one um, program or another of PhilHealth. Premium contributions are sourced from the proceeds of the SIN tax law, um, but seniors with regular sources of income will continue to pay the premium. And the benefits include fixed case rate for inpatient services in private hospitals. Um, although one would note that um, the case rate would probably be, is probably much lower than the actual cost um, in the private hospital. No balance billing for inpatient services in public hospitals, outpatient benefits enjoyed by PhilHealth members in other membership categories, um, Z benefit packages for illnesses. Um, and if you look at the number of cities, senior citizens who are members of PhilHealth, um, it has gone up from 4.46 million in 2014 to 8.8 um, million in 2018 and this does not include yet um, dependents and senior citizens registered under the sponsored members category this is the data from PhilHealth um, admin data from PhilHealth and I just want to um, uh, point out that the estimate of population of senior citizens in 2018 is around 8.685 8,685,698, so lower than the number of members, um, senior citizen members listed in this table. So there might be some double counting uh, of senior citizens in the PhilHealth data since a senior citizen may fall in more than one category. Next, please. Um, in addition to that, senior citizens or minimum wage earners are exempted in paying individual income tax. Uh, Republic Act number 9994 grants to all senior citizens the following incentives and benefits. So, for instance, um, uh, you get 20, I, I get 20% discount plus VAT exemption when I go to restaurants, um, vacation centers, uh, even local airfares, hotel and lodging, um, admission fees to uh, places of culture, and even medical. Uh, related expenses such as um, medicines. Um, there are also other benefits and incentives like free training fees for socioeconomic programs conducted by private and government agencies, free medical and dental services and diagnostic and laboratory fees, educational assistance, um, priority, okay, like this one, priority in queues, you don't have to, um, you have a separate queue um, and then you get 100,000 cash grant upon reaching the age of 100 years, and other benefits and incentives provided by local government units. 
Next, please. So, um, so basically, you would have noted that I focused on programs that are intended to provide income support and also to address healthcare needs of the elderly. So now let me turn to um, what are the gaps in these policies, specific policies and programs. Next, please. So if we look at the access to social protection programs, you will note that 5.7 million or about seven in every 10 senior citizens are covered in at least one of the income support programs. SSS, GSIS, social pension, or field health um, based on the data in 2017. Also, 2.5 million or every three in every 10, or about three in every 10 senior citizens are covered in field health plus at least one of the income support programs. And we note that 26.8% of the females are covered in, um, they have at least field health plus one of the income support programs. Uh, but this is lower than the coverage for males, which is 34.4%. So again, medyo mas um, lugi yung mga females when it comes to coverage of field health plus at least one of the income support programs. So the bottom chart would show um, the proportion of senior citizen population covered in at least one social protection program. So um, this corresponds to the first Number I quoted you that about seven in every ten are covered in at least one of the one of these programs, and if you look at the coverage for those in the poorest income decile, it's only fifty six percent. So only fifty six percent of those senior citizens belonging to the poorest decile would have one of these um, um, social protection programs, as compared to eighty percent for the richest income decile. So yung mga nandun sa richest decile tend to have greater access to, to uh, at least one of these uh, programs. And also, again, we know small, lower access for females compared to males. So um, if the access of males is, if 71% if of the males have access to at least one of the social protection program, only 65% of females have access to at least one of these programs. Next, please. Um, and then in terms of access to SSS and GSIS, 27.7% um, or about three in every 10 senior citizens were covered under GSIS or SSS in, in 2017. Um, and as I've mentioned earlier, um, the minimum basic monthly pension for um, GSIS members is 5,000, higher than the, that for SSS at 2,000. Uh, and in terms of, that's the minimum, but if you look at the average basic monthly pension, uh, as I highlighted earlier, for GSIS, it's 18,525, and it's 5,123 for SSS. Now, the proportion of senior citizens with SSS GSIS by income decile um, is shown in, in the chart at the bottom. And you will see that um, those in the lower income groups uh, would have lower um, proportions of senior citizens that are covered by this contributory pension. And um, that could actually um, reflect the fact that uh, most of them are engaged in the poorer, those in the poorer income decils tend to engage in the informal sector and may not have uh, been um, participating in this um, contributory pension systems. Um, so, konti lang yung, yung um, GSIS and SSS members um, among those um, in the poorer income groups. Next, please. Um, turning to PhilHealth, we note that um, PhilHealth covered only 51.4% of senior citizens according to the 2017 APIS. So as I mentioned, in principle, all senior citizens are um, supposed to be members because of the different programs that are available to senior citizens. When asked, I, I think some individuals or some senior citizens are not aware that they are members 
and report that they are not. Um, in 2018, Phil has paid about 31 billion to healthcare providers as benefits availed by senior citizens and lifetime members. And by the way, lifetime members are those who have reached 60 and over and have paid um, um, Phil has contributions um, for um, so many, so many years. And so they don't have to pay premium anymore and lifetime member na sila. But they still get to avail of the benefits. So although majority of Phil health members in the lowest income deserts enjoy free, free health insurance coverage and paying members, greater effort is needed to realize the universal coverage stipulated in the Universal Health Care Act. Um, as I mentioned, not all are aware or seem to be aware that they are members and also the benefits um, are not enough to cover all of the health care needs of um, senior citizens. So if you look at the proportion of senior citizens with field health by income decile, again, we note that um, this is based again on the 2017 um, APIS data. There seems to be a lower proportion among um, those belonging to the poorer income groups. Um, overall, as I said, 51.4 are reported that they're members of uh, field health, and this is higher for males at 54.9% and um, only 48.5% among females. Next, please. Now, um, looking at the social pension, um, there's um, what we find is that one in every five senior citizens were SOC pen beneficiaries in 2017, again, based on the APIS data. Um, but we um, also processed the data and we found that about 12% of the SOC pen recipients were pensioners of SSS, GSIS, or private insurance com other private insurance companies, and 8% were from the richest income decile. So these findings are in contrast with the eligibility requirements of the um, SOCPEN program. So again, this probably um, suggests the need to revisit um, the targeting of this particular um, program, revisit the eligibility um, criteria, how they can be um, more effectively implemented, uh, how the eligibility criteria could be more effectively implemented. Now, looking at the variation between men and women, there seems to be no large variation, the proportion of men and women benefiting from social pension program. If you look at the bottom chart, 21.1% um, of um, uh, the male senior citizens are able to receive social pension, and 21.9% of the female senior citizens are able to receive social pension. Um, but what we find is that 28.8% of the beneficiaries of social pension program belong to the bottom 30%. Um, we are expecting a much higher number for this if um, they're supposed to be for the indigent. Um, also, we find that 69% of the bottom 30% do not receive um, social pension. Next, please. So coverage for senior citizens by economic activity. Again, economic activity here is based on um, the APIS question of whether they have a job or business. Um, and what we find here is that um, um, if you look at the first one, SSS, GSIS, um, they would 27.7% of all senior citizens have um, access to SSS or are members of SSS or GSIS. And for those senior citizens who currently have a job or business, 24% um, are members of um, uh, SSS or GSIS, and 30.5% are those are uh, those without job or or business. And then in terms of field health, 51.4% of all senior citizens have um, access or are field health members. And um, among those with job or business, 56% uh, of them have access to or are members of PhilHealth. And 47.7% of those without job or business are covered by PhilHealth. Now, among social pension uh, beneficiaries, 
21.5% of all senior citizens are um, are beneficiaries of social pension and 20.9% um, with job or business. 20.9% uh, of those with job or business are social pension beneficiaries as compared to 22% for those without job or um, business. Um, if you look at the chart, you will notice that um, for field health, it's more evenly distributed because it's not really based on um, economic status. So the participation or proportion of senior citizens by income decile is not as, um, as um, uh, different across um, income decas, although still a bit lower for the poorer income decas. If you look at SOCPEN, this is what we would expect, higher proportion um, among the poorer income groups, because in fact, we are targeting this to benefit the poorer income groups. And then in the case of SSS, GSIS, you would notice that um, there's higher proportion among the richer income groups because um, those in the richer income groups tend to work more in the formal sector, and that's why you see this higher coverage among the richer income groups. Next, please. So here, uh, we just wanted to show, um, to compare um, the distribution of the um, members um, by income decile and what we find for SSS and GSI or GSIS. This is for the contributory pension program. 6% um, of the member um, senior citizens belong to the bottom three income deciles and 67.4% um, belong to the top three income deciles. So mas marami talaga from the higher income group. So as I said, probably because they work more in the formal sector. Next, please. And then in terms of uh, membership to field health, we find that 16.1% belong to the bottom three income deciles and 44.8% belong to the top three income deciles. Again, uh, favoring more the um, richer income groups. Next. And, but in terms of social pension uh, recipients, 28.8% of the SOC pen beneficiaries belong to the bottom three income deciles and 24.3% um, were in the top three income deciles. We would expect, uh, you know, uh, probably a bit more um, bias towards, we're hoping that it would, the number would be greater than 28.8% for the poorer income groups. Next, please. Just have a few more um, slides. So. Um, for the other citizen discount and tax incentives, um, um, households in higher income deciles spend more on goods and services in which senior citizens are entitled to discount and tax exemption privileges. Um, and consequently, the, the richer senior citizens tend to benefit more from discounts and exemptions as they spend more on the goods and services that are entitled to these privileges. So what the table shows you would be the average annual spending on selected goods and services of households with at least one senior citizen member using the data from the 2015 FIES. And these are the categories which have, um, which allows for 20% discount and VAT um, exemption. Um, and you will see, for instance, that, uh, okay, restaurants and, and hotels, um, those in the first decile, the poorest decile, would spend on the average per year 3,734 in restaurants and hotels as compared to, um, if you look at the richest decile, 35,282.82. And so what this is saying is that since the rich tend to spend more on these particular categories, then they tend to um, benefit more um, because they... I mean, the poor don't usually eat out a lot uh, as compared to those in the higher income group. So they would tend to benefit more from this senior citizen discount and tax incentive. Next, please. So basically what I've done is just to focus on a few, as I said, uh, that was the intent to focus on those programs that uh, tend to provide income support as well as to provide healthcare services. So um, let me just summarize the findings before I go to a few of uh, recommendations. 
um, population of senior citizens is estimated at 9.43 million in 2020, constituting 8.6% of the total population. Senior citizens tend to be less economically active than their younger counterparts. About 44% of seniors have a job or business, while at least 70% of the younger age groups have a job or business. Senior females tend to be less economically active than senior men, 36% versus 54%. About 13% of senior citizens belong to families that are income poor, uh, based on the 2015 data. Moreover, 39.5% belong to the poorest five deciles, and 60.5% belong to the five richest deciles. As I mentioned, this is primarily due to the better health and nutrition um, um, being um, experienced by those belonging to the higher income groups. Next. And uh, nevertheless, the elderly need greater health services, as has been documented in many other studies. Um, only 27.7% of seniors are SSS or GSIS members, higher for men, 32.7%, and 23.6% for women. There's low membership among the poorer elderly due to the nature of their work. There's also low membership among workers. Um, sorry, um, low membership among workers in the um, private. There's not 100. Per, I guess um, less um, compliance um, in government. It's easier to implement uh, membership in GI, GSIS, but in the private sector, it's more difficult to require everyone to enroll their employees in SSS. Um, only 8% of the elderly in the poorest three deciles are SSS GSIS members, while 44% of the richest three deciles are members. Um, average monthly pension from GSIS is more than three times that of SSS, as I said, mainly because of the higher contributions. A social pension of 500 per month represents 20% of the poverty threshold in 2018 and 30% of the food threshold. So it's not enough really to cover all the food, the basic food and non-food needs of um, an individual. Next, please. As of end 2019, 3.8 million seniors are social pension beneficiaries. This represents 40% of all seniors. With a poverty incidence of 13%, this represents significant leakages to the non-poor elderly. If we wanted to provide assistance only to the poor, we would only need 7.4 billion pesos instead of 22.8 billion pesos to provide monthly pension of 500 pesos. That means that if you have this fixed amount, you could actually provide bigger um, monthly subsidy to fewer um, beneficiaries. There's also significant exclusion. Only about a third of the poor seniors receive social pension based on 2017-80s data. Uh, while all seniors are supposed to be PhilHealth members, not all are aware that they are. There are limited benefits, so there's still considerable out-of-pocket expenses for hospitals and outpatient services. Um, richer Senior citizens tend to benefit more from senior discount for selected goods and services since they spend more on these items. Next. So what are some of our recommendations? One is um, we want to promote, particip we recommend part promoting participation of women in social security systems. Since contributory pension programs of the government are only accessible for those previously employed, being employed may improve women's access to social protection programs when they reach the age of 60. Likewise, a non-working woman who's managing the household and family affairs full-time and, and whose spouse is employed and actively pays SSS contributions may avail of a voluntary coverage under the SSS. Second is to increase awareness uh, of senior citizens of the government's social protection programs. Focus must be given to poor senior citizens and those in disadvantaged sectors to identify and address any access issues to these programs. Third is improve the targeting system for social pension for indigent senior citizens. Um, given the government's limited budget, the high leakage rate, um, meaning inclusion of beneficiaries that are already receiving other forms of pension and those belonging to the richest income ladder, serves as a barrier to indigent senior citizens not enrolled in the, in the program. Having a comprehensive database of senior citizens and a better targeting system may improve access of indigent seniors. Next, please. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the 500 monthly stipend may not be adequate to sustain the daily needs of indigent senior citizens, particularly if given only every six months. I, I think the um, frequency of release 
is also very important. So probably the government can revisit the amount and the frequency of payouts of the social pension program. Higher stipend may be possible with improved targeting. And fifth, um, we want to recommend um, data sharing and interoperability of databases of different agencies. For targeted interventions, data is crucial. To identify eligible beneficiaries, data coming from different sources may be needed to validate administrative data. For instance, data of SSS, GSIS, and Listahanan, and um, the newly institutionalized CBMS are needed to validate list of senior citizens that should be given social pension. So here, I think with the um, nationwide implementation of the national ID, uh, that would make it easier to link or merge many of these different um, databases. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Mamsel, for your comprehensive presentation. Now let's let us listen to the comments of our discussant, who is a veteran in the field of social work. She is the Assistant Secretary for Policy and Plans Group, as well as the head of the uh, Policy Development and Planning Bureau at the DSWD Central Office. She worked with the World Vision and at the DSWD Field Office at the Cordillera Administra Administrative Region and the Ifugao uh, Provincial oh, yeah. Social Welfare and Development Office. She is also an indigenous person from the Ifugao Province, a sector whose rights she had represented and championed during her stint at the SWD PAR. Under her leadership, the Ifugao PSWDO was able to establish benchmarks and models through the creation of the Ifugao Reflection I Camp for the rehabilitation it. and reintegration of persons recovering from drug addiction. The IRC was later recognized and served as a model for the community-based rehabilitation after care and integration through the SWD's Yakup Bayan program. Friends, Assistant Secretary Jocelyn Iwane of the DSWD. Can you hear Ma'am? Yeah, you're Ma'am, your microphone is on now. Mom, we can appear you for. Okay, now, can you hear me? Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you for. Okay, good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity to be uh, with you. Um, so, May we greet each and everyone first. A good afternoon to all participants and organizers of this webinar. Uh, Dr. Cecil Reyes, Mr. Ankin um, Abordeneda, and Ms. Rosine Assis. Kudos and congratulations for this discussion paper that covers most evidences on the situation, policies, programs, and prospects of the Filipino senior citizens. The strength of the research paper is it is in being able to back up the situation of Philippine aging population through official indicators, data analysis, and projections, which are important for the policy making and planning. It is able to, to more or less achieve its research objectives, describing senior citizens' health, economic needs, identify policies and programs, and its extent assess gaps and derived corresponding policies and recommendations. The ensuing challenges of an aging population around the globe, in particular the Philippines, as the research paper implies, should indeed be addressed. The senior citizens are among the sectors of the population that the DSWD has provided much attention in terms of formulation and implementation of policies, plans and programs that uphold their rights and welfare in coordination with partners in social protection sector. The current policy and legislative framework on senior citizens in the international field and emerging in the Philippines recognizes the older people as active contributors in society in crafting policies, programs for development, advocating anti-poverty initiatives, 
and recommendations to address discrimination in work and pension health, among others. This is the so-called active aging. Republic Act 10911, as stated earlier by Mom Cecil, or the Anti-Age Discrimination in Employment Act, which promotes quality employment opportunities in treatment in the workplace by promoting the employment of individuals based on their competencies, irrespective of their age, could be considered in the research papers com complications of policies, compilation of policies. It could address the income and eventual health protection of senior citizens. We at the DSWD in, is one with you in our focus and responses for our senior citizens. This COVID-19 pandemic has exposed prominently and brought to the core what other vulnerabilities our older population faces, especially the poor households. As also discussed in this paper and other researches before and during the COVID-19 pandemic, there are realities that we have to contend with as far as the older population is concerned. We see the we see the gaps and limitations in our responses to the needs of the older people or persons in terms of programs in the services they need and other assistance or benefits due them. So please to say, however, that we have been responsive to the plight of the senior citizens. Please allow me to mention here again the DSWD's programs and services of our senior citizens, just to give you additional information and brief updates. It was discussed earlier that there is such a thing as social pension program for indigent senior citizens. It is true that the 500 pesos is not enough uh, for the indigent SOC pen beneficiaries. As man however, this is a man it's mandated under Republic, Republic Act number 9994 or the expanded citizens Senior Citizens Act of 2010. It started in 2011 with only 870 million budget and served 138,960 senior citizens aged 77 years old and above until 2015. In 2016, up to the present, qualified senior citizens aged 60 years old and above were included in the social pension. The DSWD targeted 1.1 beneficiaries and the budget rose to 7.5 billion, more than 850 times the target and budget when it started in 2011. This 2020, the target is 3.7 senior citizens beneficiaries and a target allocation of 23 billion. As of June 2020, there are already 2.5 beneficiaries served or 66.7 of the target for this year. In 10 years since RA 994 was enacted, the target and budget for the social pension had risen to more than 2,700 times of the target and budget compared with that of 2011. The second is the centenarian gift, implementing Republic Act number 10868 or the the Act of 2016, the law was passed in 2016. For the last four years, a total of 6,000 centenarians were already awarded with 100,000 each. The total budget allocation from 2016 to 2020 has reached a total of 365 million. This 2020, 952 centenarians are targeted for the centenarian gift with a budget allocation of 108 million. 424 were already awarded from January to June 2020. Thirdly, unconditional cash transfer or the UCT. This is a six year tax mitigation program, three year tax mitigation program with the implementation of Republic Act number 10963 or the tax reform or for acceleration and inclusion or trade. An additional cash grant of 200 per month was provided to eligible beneficiaries starting in 2018 and 300 pesos each per month, 2019 and 2020. 
The total number of beneficiaries this 2020 is 10 million. That includes social pension and Panta with a million Filipino beneficiaries. For 2019 and 2020, it will be paid through cash card top up. As of today, no beneficiaries has been paid yet. That is a little bit sad. And the DSWD is currently facilitating the issuance of cash cards to the beneficiaries. In addition, the allocation for CY 2020 is yet to be released by the DBM to the Land Bank of the Philippines. So we hope this will happen very soon. And fourth, the center-based and residential care facilities for senior citizens. The DSWD manages four residential care facilities located in NCR, Region 4A, Region 9, and Region 11. They cater to and provide 24-hour services to abandoned, neglected, or voluntarily commit committed senior citizens. The clients serve at these facilities for senior citizens range from 650 to 850 annually, and the length of stay of a client is from six months to two years. Sometimes they exceed their bed capacity. Since 2018 to present, renovation, repair, improvement, or new constructions are being undertaken in these facilities to improve the structures and services with the objective to raise them on a center of excellence. And number six, assistance to individuals in crisis situation. Services and financial assistance provided are as follows, rescue and protection, financial assistance for medical, burial, transportation, educational expenses, material assistance in the form of food and non-food items, and referrals for medical, legal, psychosocial, temporary shelter, and other services. Medical assistance is the most service provided to clients. We have observed that the number of senior citizens' clients have been increasing through the years, and majority are women. As of June 2020, a total of 72,553 senior citizens were assisted through the AX. The majority of the senior citizens served with AX were female, totaling to 45,489, while male clients totaled to 27,000. In these pandemic times, also as of June 2020, the DSWD has served 101,000 clients for COVID-19 related concerns in the region. The DSWD central office and <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, sorry for that. <clears throat> this Come on. Okay, lang, okay. Lang. Hello, okay, lang. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you, Paul. Okay. Yes, somebody. The NCR together with registered a total number of forty thousand. 390 clients served related to the pandemic. We have yet to disaggregate if how other systems assistance to conflict affected and vulnerable areas. This 2020 identified senior citizens totaling to 16,893 were provided with social pension in 162 conflict area barangays assistance to communities in, the, in need. 
Since 2015, this is the provision of financial assistance for the repair, construction of senior citizens, centers and daycare centers. Social program. Oops. <clears throat> for the social amelioration program, emergency subsidy program to Republic Act number 11469, or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act of 2020, brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. The DSWD has been mandated to implement social amelioration measures to provide subsidy for basic necessities and ways for the recovery of most affected families and individuals. The social amelioration measures of the DSWD include the assistance to individuals in crisis situations, augmentation of food and non-food items, sustainable livelihood programs, and social pension. For indigent senior citizens and supplementary program as well. As uh, stated earlier, there, we also have discovered or observed gaps and challenges that needs to be addressed by the department. Actually, the DSWD has already undertaken the process of evaluation of the DSWD programs and services for senior citizens. The gaps and the limitations in the implementation of social welfare and health programs and services were already discussed and identified, and the corresponding policies and interventions were recommended. These were deliberated upon by an interagency and stakeholders' participation during the formulation of the successor Philippine Plan of Action for Senior Citizens of the or the PPASC 2019-2020. The assessment of the implementation of the PPACS 26, 2012 to 2016, recommendations to which were considered and included in the plan. The Philippine Plan of Action on for Senior Citizens 2019-2020 promotes the rights and welfare of senior citizens and set priority areas and actions, action points to guide efforts towards the attainment of the goals in ensuring the promotion of security and dignity of senior citizens while maintaining their full participation in human rights. The implementation of programs and services are mandated upon specific laws as mentioned above for each program services, <clears throat> like social pension, centenarian, and UCT. We agree that the amounts granted are not enough at this present times, but it's also through legislation or amendments of the said laws. The speed in which the changes can be done depends on the legislative bodies. The coverage of the social pension also depends on the budget allocation of the program. Within directive from the president to validate the list of social pension beneficiaries to ensure that only qualified senior citizens will be benefited from the program. The DSWD through the program management bureau and field offices conducted the validation of beneficiaries. This validation process was the reason of the delay in the payout for the social pension in 2019. In 2019, the DSWD validated a total of 4.2, of which 3.7 is the target beneficiaries, and a total of 3.6 were clean listed, or 95.80% of the target are eligible. Only the clean listed beneficiaries were paid in 2019. Further, the DSWD data showed that 65,500 5, 65, or 1.7 only were eligible for reasons that they are receiving other pensions or were regular income, in contrast with the findings stated as 12% with pensions and 8% from the richest income decile, respectively. The basis of the DSWD come from its database, Listahanan of 2015, an actual list of beneficiaries using its beneficiary update form and none on its estimate alone. The DSWD operates 
a specific information system on social pension on the social pension program information system for its beneficiaries and to mitigate or augment the other needs of the senior citizens the dswd provides other forms of assistance that the senior citizens can avail of like the ax <clears throat> social amelioration program center-based services and other financial assistance mentioned earlier as to the recommendation that indeed beneficiaries must be made aware of the existence or guidelines in accessing these programs as far as the DSWD social pro pension program is concerned. The ULAT ng Bayan survey conducted last June 2019 showed that 76% are aware of the program, where it is higher in rural areas at 81%. As the paper recommends that in need to improve access of sectors that currently have lower access, the DSWD similarly recognizes that special attention should be given to older Filipino persons living in poverty and with disabilities or her health problems to access support services. Likewise, with the help of various partners and stakeholders, the department aims to promote the attainment of active aging among the senior citizens towards an improved quality of life. Relevant policies and enabling environment must be placed on the current laws on senior citizens must be fully implemented for senior citizens to also fully enjoy and benefit on the privileges for them. Truly, it is a trade-off between equality and equity. The universality or equality of benefit, ben benefits and privileges. Provisions of the law must be equitable and should learn lean towards the lower and lowest decile of senior citizens pending bills related to social pension and centenarian gift. Among other bills related to senior citizens were already filed and are pending at the Congress or Senate. <clears throat> For discounts and other privileges, only those who have means can afford and enjoy the benefits. The creation of the National Commission of Senior Citizens or the NCSC through Republic Act number 1135 zero in July 25, 2019, is one silver lining for the senior citizens. This has been a recommendation for several years by senior citizens organizations. The DSWD is mandated by law to transfer the programs and services for senior citizens, the NCSC, who will implement them. At present, two women commissioners are already appointed to the NCSC. Uh, and they are com Commissioner uh, Ida Patron and Commissioner Gloria Mercado are in the process of court. So we are coordinating closely with them now, but we cannot fully uh, transfer all these programs because we still have to wait for five more commissioners to be appointed to complete the seven commissioners and be fully operational. It is hoped that with the creation of the NCSC, this there will be more focus for the welfare of senior citizens and will consider the relevant recommendations of the sector. So this actually wrap up our recommendation and our <clears throat> observation on the uh, paper that was well presented by uh, Mama Cecilia. And uh, of course, we would also like to ask uh, just a question relative to uh, it, did the study include the uh, AFP, PNP, and uh, PVAO in this study? Uh, yun lang siguro ang gusto namin din itano. Maraming maraming salamat po sa opportunity nito. Thank you po, ma. Thank you very much, uh, Sekmiwane. Uh, we greatly appreciate your response to the uh, uh, recommendations as well as your uh, comments on the, on the findings and recommendations of the um, BIDS, BIDS study conducted by Dr. Reyes and her staff. And we are also glad to learn about the actions that have been taken so far by uh, the DSWD to address, to address the gaps and issues in uh, uh, the implementation of the different programs handled by the DSWD. 
Mamsel, may we hear your thoughts, please, on uh, the uh, comments of uh, Asak Niwane? Yes, actually, thank you very much uh, for the additional information. And I, I think we're very pleased to hear that efforts are being done and have been uh, actually undertaken to validate the list, because I think that's one of the more important issues. And um, uh, just to respond quickly to the question, we, we focused on just, as I said, a few programs. There are, um, I'm sure, a lot more um, programs that are being done in other aspects of the quality of life of senior citizens, but we just focused on those main programs. But I believe the question in the annual poverty indicator survey actually asked about um, pensions being received from not just SSS and GSIS, but also the other um, um, programs mentioned like the AFP and so forth. So, but we did not um, dwell on, on this specific um, programs in, in detail. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamsel. Uh, well, before we go to the open forum, let us have a call. Um, and this poll is about the uh, um, SOC pen or the social pension. In Dr. Reyes' presentation, as well as in the remarks of uh, Asak Niwane, they both of them mentioned about the social pension, which um, right now is a targeted intervention in the sense that it is for um, the low income senior citizens. However, some groups are pushing for a universal uh, universal social pension, meaning that all senior citizens, regardless of socioeconomic status, will receive a basic pension. So which do you think is better? Tell us what you think by joining our poll on the question, should all senior citizens be given the social pension from the government? Yes or no? So um, we, we, invite, we invite you to participate in this poll and we will reveal the results before we close our webinar. Okay, so now let us go to the um, open forum. And aside from Asika, Joyce Niwan, and Dr. Reyes, we will be joined by Mr. Rekliofe, uh, Planning Officer, Policy and External Affairs Division of the DSWD, Ms. Cynthia Lagasca, Research and uh, Evaluation Division Chief, and Ms. Mira Melaksa, Community-Based community uh, Programs uh, Division Chief, as well as by Ms. Anna Salud, DSWD Social Pension Focal Person. Okay. So uh, we have received uh, some very interesting questions from our Facebook viewers. And um, this first question is uh, from uh, Okay, from Heine Cardoc uh, Reyes, and we would like to uh, throw this question to our uh, friends from the DSWD led by Asak Niwane. Asak Niwane, earlier you talked about the center-based uh, and residential facilities, which is actually uh, for abandoned and uh, neglected uh, senior citizens. Now, um, the question, this question from um, Heine Cardoc Reyes, uh is about um other is about other initiatives to provide facilities or homes to senior citizens who do not want to be a burden to their children or grandchildren and uh, he added in this facility senior citizens who are still functional can have board and lodging recreational activities they can interact with one another um have um, take advantage of alternative learning systems as well as receive health services. Do we have such kind of uh, programs which is run by uh, the DSWD? Because you mentioned earlier that the center-based residential facilities are for abandoned and uh, neglected senior citizens. So, meron bang iba pa yung mga homes which are not necessarily for abandoned and neglected senior citizens, but you know those who do not want to um, to be a burden to their families, but so they would like to uh, reside in a home instead. mga parang uh, nursing homes sa tinatawag. Mm. Yes, uh, actually, as of now, we are not. We don't have uh, a a facility that is really for like a nursing home, but we mm. really cater to abandoned and neglected senior citizens. 
uh, yun po yung limitation natin as of now. Uh, we hope okay. that answers it. Uh, but we have, of course, I think there are some uh, private and or NGOs who uh, are trying to start this kind of uh, program. Thank you very much, Asek. Uh, we have another question, and this is about uh, the um, social amelioration uh, program. No? And um, okay, this question is from one of our Facebook viewers. Uh, let me just uh, check. Uh, okay, and this is from Nina uh, Manalo Bautista. No, so. Yun po bang mga nakatang, nakakatanggap, mga SOC beneficiaries who are receiving 500 uh, peso per month, nakatanggap din po ba sila nung, nung SOC, which amounts to 5,000 to 8,000? Covered po ba sila nung, ano, nung uh, package? Um, actually, uh, just to put it in context, this uh, social amelioration program is not only the SWD, but uh, one of the uh, implementing agencies is the SWD, and we call that the Emergency Subsidy Program. For some senior citizens who are SOC pen, uh, they are qualified if they are the head of the family or they are in, uh, they are part of a family because the SOC the SOC is catering to families, not individuals. So some of our senior citizens. Uh, are also beneficiaries. So they, uh, once they are head of the family, then they can, they avail the ESP program. Yan po. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Our next question is from um, a colleague at the IDS, uh, Dr. Francis Kimba. And this is also for you again, uh, Dr. Um, Asek Niwani. And I would la like also, um, our president, Dr. Reyes, to um, share her thoughts on this. Uh, what is your opinion regarding a, a reverse mortgage program as a means for senior citizens to have monthly cash flow? Hello, ma'am. Uh, all of, as of now, we are we are just doing yet this so social pension, but uh, maybe that could be looked into uh, mm -hmm. how that could be done. But uh, for at present, uh, the program that the DSWD is implementing is the social pension. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mamsel, would you have any thoughts on this question uh, from Francis? Perhaps Francis can describe a little bit what this reverse mortgage program entails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, we cannot contact uh, Francis at the moment because he, uh, he is watching on Facebook, but uh, we can clarify this with him uh, later on. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, okay. Okay, we have another question from um, Jose Marie Trinidad, another Facebook viewer, and this is about the national ID, no? So, ang tanong niya is, will it replace the senior citizen's ID issued by LGUs once we have the national ID? Uh, Asik Niwane, you may want to uh, answer this first, and then we can uh, have um, Dr. Reyes' uh, comments after you. Um, the... National ID would be best, actually, and yeah, it it there's a there's a big uh, possibility that the national ID would be more uh, better. However, it does not limit the LGUs to still issue an ID for the senior okay. citizen. Okay, thank you very much, Mamsel. Yeah, I, I think the national ID will serve the purpose of. Um, identifying who are um, 60 and over because the birth date is captured in the national ID. But I would also agree that some LGUs may still want to um, provide their own um, local senior citizens ID, primarily because they also provide additional benefits, LGU specific benefits. So I understand um, 
libre cine ba? Um, libre ba yung movies in certain uh, cities? I think in Manila or in Makati or libre cake. So I, I think um, some LGUs might still want to um, issue um, their local senior citizen ID. But I think in terms of identifying whether you are 60 and over, um, the national ID would provide that kind of information. Thank you very much. Mamsel, this next question is for you. Uh, based on your study, uh, nakita ba ninyo how many senior citizens are living in a household on the average? Um, we did that, but I don't have the, the number right now. Um, but I think given na konti lang naman siya, I, I think probably just hazarding a guess, um, based on the population distribution, siguro isa or dalawa lang uh, on the average. Of course, there would be some you know, households that would really be more, um, yung mga empty nesters na, so uh, yeah. they would be consisting of uh, more um, older persons, um, but I don't have the exact number right now. Thank you very much po. Asik ni Wane, um, sa inyo pong uh, mga ini-implement na uh, programa, meron po ba kayong nakuhang uh, data on this na ilan yung on the average per household ang ating mga senior citizens? Um, I think uh, Ms. Uh, Tere has, uh, there's, uh, we have, uh, I think, a data, but uh, ni Mr. But It's okay, ma'am. <laughs> we can call Ms. Tere pag available. <laughs> In, oh, ito. Sige. Ayun. Hi, Ms. Tere. Good afternoon po. Uh, this Good one is rinig. a... Alisin niya. Ano? Di ba rinig po? Oo. Uh, Ma'am, good afternoon. If, if, if you can also uh, enable your uh, video, ma'am, para makita po namin kayo. Ayan, sige, sige. Pag naman. We have... Uh, we have um, data in... 2007, based on the population study, based on the PPAC 2012-2016, there are about 372,129 senior citizens living alone. That means they are alone in their one household. Mm -hmm. They comprise 6.7% of the total 5.5 million senior citizens way back 2007. We do not have an updated data. So far, that's what we have. Okay. So we can get it this 2020. Okay, yeah. po. Thank you. Asek, um, earlier, um, you mentioned that uh, the DSWD has uh, conducted uh, some as an assessment of uh, your, your programs, including the SOC 10, no? Okay. Um, Regarding po the amount and the frequency of the payout, um, ano po yung nakita ninyo? Well, you already said that it's really not enough. And actually, this is also one of um, the uh, concerns of uh, a Facebook viewer. And he mentioned that the 500 pesos SOC 10 provides an indigent senior only 16.66 a day. So, and sabi niya, what service goods can be possibly accessed with that amount? A review of this amount should be done and adjusted to something more helpful. Would you like to comment uh, on this uh, asset? Yeah, I we, we all agree. I believe that the 500 pesos is really not enough. However, we are just implementing the law. So I guess mm -hmm. we, we all rally to make it to put this in uh, forward for our mm -hmm. legislators to mm -hmm. be able to increase it. Um, so, tulong -tulong po tayo dito. There's, a, there's a move for this, but of course, uh, uh, we need the support of the citizenry for the citizen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and actually, there are um, proposed uh, laws, no? proposed legislations in Congress and Senate. No? Yes, yes. To, I think, um, increase the soft pen. Ma'am Sel? 
Yeah, if I may just add, I, I think we all agree that 500 is, is not enough. It's not even enough to meet the basic uh, food needs. So, uh, and at the same time, we also recognize the limited fiscal space that where we operate in. And so I think the, um, if you want to provide a higher subsidy to our elderly, to the senior citizens, uh, we need to improve the targeting system. Um, if we can focus on really the indigents so that we can provide a more substantial amount and I think that's why it's very important at this time, because we're um, with all of these shocks, with all of these calamities, um, I think it's, um, in fact, we're delayed. We should really put up very good registries so we have um, readily available data. So if we need to assist a particular group, and it's not just listing, for instance, it's not just a list of senior citizens because um, the population would be too big to assist everyone, but we need additional items of information for every one of them. So um, that's why it's very important to have, to be able to make use of information coming from different databases, different administrative data that's being um, um, compiled by different government agencies. So. Um, there should be, I think, greater efforts to making sure that these databases are interoperable so you can easily um, check, okay, is this uh, uh, regarding the question earlier, um, is he the household head? Um, should he be he or she be given um, SAP, SAP? Um, who are actually benefiting from um, this different program? So there's no duplication and so you can have more equitable distribution of whatever um, safety nets we have. So I think we need to put in a lot of efforts towards um, developing these registries. Um, so before I think we were okay with just having um, sample surveys and having some indication of what the situation is in terms of how many, what proportion of um, um, senior citizens are poor, what proportion of citizen of senior citizens are um, um, need health care and so forth. But I think now the really with the SDGs um, mantra of leaving no one behind, we need information at the individual level. We need to know who they are and where they are. And so that if we need to assist them, we know where to locate them. So um, I, I think there needs to be greater discussion and effort in terms of how you develop this registry. So, for instance, we've started with the registry for this um, registry system for the basic sector in, in agriculture. So, I, I think a registry system for um, senior citizens, um, IPs, um, persons with disabilities, and this needs to be um, interoperable, so we could link them together so that if we need, um, if we have programs that require certain eligibility criteria, it would be easy to determine who are eligible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mam Sel. That is a very good point and all the, um, the, we need to have comprehensive uh, data, interoperable registries, which contain uh, both general and specific data for, for better targeting. You know? Um, and speaking of data, we have a question from one of our WebEx participants, and uh, perhaps um, our friends from the DSWD can answer this. It's and this is from Christy Andalesho, uh, and he wants to know if we have data on single male and single female senior citizens. Um, Tere, do we have data on that? I think okay. we have no data on the number of sex disaggregation. Yes. Yes. I guess mm -hmm. uh, as maybe we could ask our uh task PMB if they have male and female if they, we have that the sex of disaggregated data from PMB mm -hmm. if uh, whoever is there. Who's that? Uh see Miss Laksa. Oh, okay. Before that, we would like to inform the uh, everybody that we hope that if the list of Han and three will be done, probably we could have uh, a better picture of uh, 
the situation where our senior citizens are, as uh, uh, Mom said earlier, Mom Cell, and uh, yes. if they are really the household, uh, how many in the household, and of course, if they are the head of the family. So we are looking forward for the uh, completion of the Lista Hanan 3, supposed to be done by this uh, year, but due to the COVID uh, pandemic, it was uh, stopped. So we hope still that it will be finished within the year if there's a possibility so we could have a better picture of this. But for your uh, question regarding the uh, sex disaggregation, maybe our uh, sisters up at the PMB could uh, answer Ms. Laksa if she's there because they just they were the ones who did the clean list of the senior citizens. Okay. Uh, Ms. Yes, Laksa? Yes, Asik Niwani. Uh, actually, we do have the data of uh, sex aggregated data of our senior citizens. However, it is not with me right now, but we could provide you and upon that data as we will have to get it from our NEU unit. Uh, but absolutely, we have that sex is aggregated data. But as to the social status of our senior citizens, if they are single or married, um, uh, I think this is not part of our database. But uh, again, as mentioned by Asek Niwani, this could be uh, extracted from our uh, listahanan 3 once it is already completed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asek Nihan. Asik Niwani and uh, Ms. Laksa. Okay, our next question is again for our friends at the DSWD. And this, this is uh, with regard to um, uh, the pandemic. So, and um, our question is from Nina Belen. Sabi niya, in other countries, there have been serious violations of human rights inside residential care facilities for older persons amid this pandemic, such as uh, inhumane and degrading treatment. So, question for the SWD, meron na po bang, meron na po bang na-monitor ang the SWD na mga ganitong mga situation? Either siguro sa mga, not necessarily uh, sa mga residential care facilities, but even yung, yung sa mga ano po, sa mga homes, uh, kasi you mentioned about you have the residential facilities, and even siguro mga private households, meron na po ba tayong na-monitor na gano'n? Ms. Alaksa? Uh, yes, ma'am. In fact, uh, there are reports coming uh, from uh, concerned citizens with regard to elderly abuse, ano po, especially during the time of pandemic between March to May. Uh, again, uh, we could provide you the detailed report on this, but uh, given our mandate, to really manage these cases ano po, in cooperation or in coordination with our local social welfare and development officers at the LGUs. Again, kaagad-agad uh, po natin itong uh, kinu-coordinate sa kanila uh, with our DSWD field offices to really look into these cases of abuses among our uh, senior citizens. Ano po. Uh, kaya nga po, um, one of our offices din po here at the central office is our social technology bureau. Uh, isa nga po sa kanilang pinapilot, uh, dinidevelop ngayon na project, is uh, what we call the Reporting System and Prevention Program for Elderly Abuse Cases. So mm -hmm. ito po, ang isa sa tinitingnan namin ngayon, magiging mekanismo natin ma para mas lalong uh, mamonitor po natin yung mga cases na mga elderly abuse. Thank you po. Thank you very much. Again, our next question is for our DSWD. Uh, partners, no? May mga guidelines na po ba sa nonagenarian? Well, uh, yung mga from 90 to 99 uh, years old, ang alam ko dito, hindi ba may incentive once they reach 100 years, meron silang matatangga from the uh, LGU. But would you like to um, expound on this, uh, Ms. Laksa? Actually, Ma'am Sheila, this is uh, one of the, uh, some of the pending bills now uh, mm -hmm. yeah, at the lower house, ano po, yung mga from 80 years old, 85, 90, mm -hmm. 95, ano po, uh, mga recommendations po yan na uh, sana nga mabigyan na sila ng um, uh, cash gift at that age kasi nga based on statistics talagang hindi naman po ganun kadami na 
ang umaabot oh. ng 100 years old. So, yun po, pending pa lang po siya ngayon sa Congress. So, yung centenarian law pa lang po talaga ang meron tayo. Oo. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Laksa. Okay, another question for the SWD. In relation to the proposal to increase and expand the social pension to make it universal, can the DSWD make policy proposal to Congress in support of the advocacy of the many CSOs for universal social pension? Well, ito yung ating poll. Eh. So for those of you who haven't um, answered our poll, okay, may, may chance pa po kayo. But with regard to this question, Ms. Laksa, would you like to... Uh, comment on this. Uh, Ma'am Sheila, actually, if we will look into it, ano po, that may advantage and disadvantage. Eh. Oh, po. If Sige we will po. talk about the universal coverage as in all, meaning almost 8 million senior citizens ay mabibigyan, ang chances nito, maliit lang ang stipend mm -hmm. na maibibigay po sa kanila, given also the uh, fiscal limitation of our government. Ano po, uh, nakita nga natin, 500 pesos is not enough. So kung lahat po sila Again, dahil madi-divide sa marami ang resources, maliit lang po siya. But if mas targeted ang ating mabibigyan, meaning yung po talagang uh, indigent or talagang walang nare-receive na uh, any uh, pension from any institutions or uh, talagang walang regular income, ano po, mas uh, tingin ko po mas magiging responsive iyon sa pangangailangan ng ating mga senior citizens. Thank you very much. Ma'am Sel, would you have any uh, comment on this, the universal social protection versus uh, a more targeted scheme? Yeah, um, I would go for a more targeted scheme, um, considering na ilan lang yung poor, the poverty incidents among the, the senior citizens. So I would go for providing more assistance to fewer uh, eligible beneficiaries rather than uh, spreading over everyone and giving only a very small amount which may not really be helping um, substantially those who are most in need. So, um, sa akin lang siguro mas um, given that um, uh, konti, hindi naman siya ganun kadami pa at this time, the, the indigent um, 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 senior citizens, I would rather focus on making sure that they have at least the basic, they're able to meet their basic minimum needs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, rather than um, providing everyone with a very small amount. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, kanina pinag-usapan natin yung registry, you know, and we have some comments here. Um, okay, from Ms. Hilda Gaurino, and sabi niya, she wants to know if there is a, a database that would show the expertise of senior citizens. So not just uh, socioeconomic information, but also yung skills nila or expertise. Ano? Kasi sabi niya, she wants to relate this sa mga employability ng ating mga senior citizens. Um, and this is also uh, related to um, the, the question of Chris, Christy Andalesio. Uh, Ms. Laksa, meron bang initiative ang DSWT na ganito na in building such registry? So you go beyond the socioeconomic uh, profile but also take into account yung skills at saka uh, ano nila, uh, expertise nila so that, you know, maganda ito kasi para for their employability in terms of, you know, um, going beyond Working beyond sixty to uh, working beyond sixty five, ano? Magi silang uh, active, still active members of society sa ating labor market. Actually, Ma'am Sheila, uh, we will take note of this, and most probably we could uh, this could be part of our uh, discussion with the National Commission on Senior Citizens. Na most probably mas mak ma 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 or magagawa na nila, given that mas focus na mga po sila sa ating mga senior citizens. Okay. Thank you very Sheila, much. Sheila, may I add something? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead po. Uh, yeah, I, I think regarding that, I don't think we should aim for collecting all in all relevant information um, from um, an individual at one time. Kasi, di ba, parang ang dami nating, I, I mean, in this particular case, um, 
kanina nga, there's uh, skills, expertise, education attainment, and so forth, experience. Kasi nga, I think what we're seeing from the data is that um, the proportion of those who are still economically active even after 65, uh, particularly those from 65 to 69, eh, mataas pa siya. So, um, malaki yung um, um, supply, potential supply of labor coming from them. I think what we should be um, looking forward to is really being able to get information from different sources. Kaya importante yung interoperable yung ating mga data that's being collected by different government agencies. Kasi um, siguro nga pag nagkaroon ng national ID system, then you can link na yung data ba niya from SSS, GSIS, yung data ba niya even sa school, data ba niya sa field health, data ba niya sa as senior citizen, um, pwede na siyang pagsama-samahin. Uh, hindi kailangan um, i-collecta at the same time. So I, I think that's something that um, siguro kailangan ng talagang pag-isipan. So um, for instance, yun nga, we should start, right now we have compulsory retirement at 65, pero hindi naman natin sila kayang i-support, di ba? The, the poor. So, uh, why don't we also provide them some opportunities to be gainfully employed? Um, in fact, some of, I think some of the private companies have started to employ um, senior citizens even on a part-time mm. basis. And for other countries, ganun din. So, baka, mm. yung siguro yung dapat na direction that we should be taking. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And I think meron din mga LGUs, ano, like uh, yung initiative ng uh, LGU of the City of Manila, so they started to employ uh, mga senior citizens sa mga fast food. Okay, this will be our last question. Uh, actually, comment ito ni, from one of our Facebook viewers, si Debbie Cabanag Dakanay. Sabi niya, instead of cash-based social pension to our senior citizens, why not make social services accessible to them like free meds at hindi lang maintenance? Free medical services uh, for basic and advanced health conditions. Uh, any thoughts on this, uh, Ms. Laksa? Uh, Ma'am Sheila, probably that is the very purpose of the universal health care. Ano po, mm -hmm. para talagang maka-access ng ating uh, health services ang ating mga senior citizens. And uh, yun nga po, that is uh, DOH in partnership with the Department of Social Welfare and Development through the local social welfare and development offices. Yun po talaga ang isa sa uh, iniin naman po talaga ng ating government. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so okay, before we close our open forum, may I ask uh, Dr. Reyes uh, and uh, uh, ASEC Niwane for their, uh, if, if they have any final remarks for, uh, for our audience. ASEC Niwane first, then uh, Dr. Reyes. Uh, yes, uh, once again, good afternoon, and we would like to uh, give our gratitude on behalf of the Social Department of Social Welfare and Development, of course, uh, and our Secretary, uh, Rolando Bautista. We uh, would like to say thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to have a discussion and uh, know, uh, for, uh, for sharing, Mam says, for sharing your study. I believe that we could uh, use it uh, in uh, policies and, of course, operational uh, plans. So, for our senior citizens, we all believe that our senior citizens have to be taken care of. And they are uh, we are, they are rise they are uh, increasing in number, and uh, we hope that the National Senior Citizens Commission uh, com, uh, Council will already be uh, in place so that uh, more focus on the needs of our senior citizens will be met, and that is what we all would like. That uh, we are looking forward to participating more. With, uh, with them and especially engaging with you uh, with uh, PIDs for uh, data and uh, we will look forward to a partnership with uh, our coming National Senior Citizens Council. May we all be one with them so that when we uh, 
they ask our assistants, uh, we could all be able to give it to them. And I think they, uh, we owe it to them. Uh, without them, we will not be here. They have paved the way, so we have to give back even uh, the best way we can, despite the uh, limitations of every agency and, of course, uh, limitation of our country financially. Uh, but I guess uh, it's very important to really give them what we can at, while they are alive. So with this, I would say thank you very much, uh, Mom said. Thank you very much, uh, Sherry, for this and uh, good afternoon to each and everyone. Maraming salamat, Asik Niwane. Ma'am Sel? Yeah, um, well, of course, I'd like to thank ASEC and the rest of uh, DSWD for participating and sharing updates on some of the other programs. Siguro, ang idadagdag ko lang is, um, I, I think we also, um, while we want to provide um, many uh, safety nets and social protection programs from them, I think it's also time to... Um, Take a closer look at the data I presented that actually still a significant portion of the senior citizens are economically active. So are there other programs aside from income, the usual income support that we're looking at, like social pension? Are there other programs that we need to provide to them to make sure that they can still contribute productively to the economy? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sel. Well, uh, please join me in thanking uh, Dr. Reyes and our friends from the DSWD led by Dr. Uh, Asek uh, Jocelyn Niwane for uh, their uh, uh, comprehensive presentation and remarks and for uh, their enlightening uh, thoughts about um, this afternoon's topic. Let us give them a big virtual clap. Okay. So now that, let us go to the results of our poll on the question, should all senior citizens be given the social pension from the government? So let us look at the results, Gwen. Okay, ano kaya ang uh, pulso ng ating uh, participants? By the way, this poll is for our participants um, in WebEx. So for those of us who are joining in Facebook, uh, well, uh, we will find a way next time para maka-join din po kayo. Okay, right. Okay, ang sabi nila ay mas marami po ang yes. So a total of 58 uh, participants uh, join our poll. And so uh, 39 out of 58 um think that um our senior think that all senior citizens be given the social pension from the government so mas marami po ang um pabor sa ating sa pagkakaroon ng universal uh, social pension for our senior citizens okay Friends, what a lively and engaging discussion we just had, and we hope that our discussion today has been useful to everyone. And some um, of the important takeaways that we can glean from the discussion include the need to beef up our social protection programs and services for senior citizens through better targeting. And isa nga sa mga uh, narinig natin ngayon is yung pagkakaroon ng comprehensive and uh, interoperable uh, registry which contains um, uh, both general and specific information no, for, for better targeting of our um, programs. Also more intensive information campaigns to increase their awareness, the awareness of our senior citizens of um, the programs avail available to them as well as um, enhance their access to these programs. Also, uh, we have heard that there is really a need to increase the monthly pension, the amount of the monthly social pension. And uh, we've tackled briefly two policy options related to the social pension, and these are having a universal basic pension or universal social pension or a more targeted scheme. Although we did not touch this, I, it is also important to, to note that um, it is necessary to provide the Office of the Senior Citizens Affairs in our LGUs with adequate financial and technical support and to have better coordination between our OSCAS and the DSWD in the implementation 
monitoring and evaluation of our programs for senior citizens at the local level. Okay. Before we close, um, we have some reminders. So we've been um, uh, getting inquiries about uh, the PowerPoint presentation of Dr. Ray as well. You can access that from our uh, PIDS website. So the, the uh, link is flashed on the screen, but don't you worry if you miss that because we will email you the link. Please also answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. And we will also email you the link after the event. Your comments are very important to us to improve our webinars. And um, please also uh, regularly follow our uh, social media pages. We have our Facebook. And thanks again to our, all our Facebook viewers. We, have also, we also have a Twitter account where we do live tweeting of all our events. And of course, we have the PIDS website, which contains all our uh, publications, everything in full text, as well as um, updates on our um, events. And finally, please uh, allow us to acknowledge the various organizations from government, academe, private sector, and civil society and international um, organizations who join us today. And you can see the names of these offices on the screen. So this ends our webinar for uh, this week. And next Thursday, July 30, we will resume our uh, PIDS DILG webinar series. Next week, we will have the second of our three-part webinar series with the DILG. And we hope you can join us again. So see you next week. Stay safe and stay healthy. Maraming salamat po. And again, thank you very much to the DSWT. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you po. Bye bye po. Thanks, Asek Niwane. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Marcel. Bye bye po. Bye.